We'd like to call our June 16th, 2022 Rutherford County Board of Commissioners into session. At this point in time, I'd like to call on our chaplain, uh, Trey Gooch, if you would please come forward. Mr. Gooch will lead us in our Pledge of Allegiance, uh, lead us in our prayer, Pledge of Allegiance to the United States flag and to the Tennessee flag. All members and audience, please stand. Our Father in prayer, O oh, Father, we love you and we praise your name, for we know that all good comes from you. And Father, we continue to pray and acknowledge that our community, along with the rest of the country, has a major problem with drug abuse, overdose, and suicide. And just recently, a friend of this body had overdosed and succumb, succumb to Satan's will. Father, we just ask that you put a hedge of protection over people who are trying to recover. May they seek you, and would you please rid them of the devil. Father, tonight we are honoring Eagleville High School students. And we know that they are here tonight, that they are in the position that they're in because they've made good decisions and that they've dedicated themselves to hard work for a common goal. And so, Father, we pray that in years to come that they continue to make good decisions with a strong work ethic toward a common goal. Father, tonight we would like to dedicate this prayer to Lisa Nolan and Mark Tucker, who decided years ago that they would dedicate themselves to a hard work ethic through transparency to serve this body and the members and the citizens of Rutherford County. And tonight, as you know, we are replacing or choosing our next finance director. We have given this decision prayerful thought, discussion, debate, and research. And if our recommendation, Michael Smith, is accepted tonight, we pray that you would give him wisdom to carry on the hard work ethics and the dedication to this body and to the people of Rutherford County and we ask you to bless him. And Father, we pray for the day where every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, and it's through his name that we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Three white stars on a field of blue, God keep them strong and ever true. It is with pride and love that we salute the flag in Tennessee. You may be seated. I'd like to welcome all of our guests tonight. Uh, thank you for coming, all of our county employees and commissioners. We're glad you're here. Just to make sure that we have a presence, if we would, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner David Gammon. Commissioner Piercy. Here. Commissioner Rather. Here. Commissioner P. Here. Commissioner Cook. Commissioner Buchanan. Here. Commissioner Cush. Present. Commissioner Reed. Here. Commissioner Gurley. Here. Commissioner Blair. Here. Commissioner Allen. Here. Commissioner Stevens. Commissioner Johnson. Here. Commissioner Virgil Gammon. Here. Commissioner Harris. Here. Commissioner Dodd. Here. Commissioner Phillips. Here. Commissioner McAdoo. Here. Commissioner Key. Here. Commissioner Gooch. Here. Commissioner Serenio. Yeah. We have a quorum, 20 present. Thank you, Madam Clerk. We do have a quorum. At this point in time, I'd like to call our, on our Chairman Pro Tem, Commissioner Jeff Phillips, for approval of the minutes. 
Mr. Phillips. Thank you, Mayor Ketron. I've reviewed those minutes. I find them to be in order with three exceptions. On page 11, there's a, uh, a spelling error, uh, and it's been reported to the clerk. On page 42, a vote was uh, recorded in error, and that's been uh, reported to the clerk. And on page 46, two votes were recorded in error, and those have also been reported to the clerk. And with those corrections, I find that the minutes are in order uh, and move that we dispense with the reading and they be adopted as presented. Have, have a motion with the corrections in it and they be adopted as written and set second by uh, Commissioner Johnson. Any questions? Without objection, all those in favor signify by saying aye. All opposed, motion carries. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, next we have a two resolutions and uh, I'm gonna call on uh, Chairman and Commissioner Reed, if you would please come up, Pettis Reed, and uh, I think you're gonna request that both the girls and boys softball, girls softball and boys baseball, if you would, please start making your way to the front. We'll do girls on one side and boys on the other. How's that? Y'all would please come up. We'll let you come right up front. Uh, Mayor, Mayor Lehman, bring them on up. I want the coaches work. to come too. Work. And we need Principal uh, Pedago to be with them too. We're honored to have um, Put the, the honorable. girls on this side and boys work. on this side over here. We're honored to have our Mayor of Eagleville, Chad Lehman, and um, I'm sure you're very proud of all these young men and women. Where the, did the girls go to Daytona or what? Oh, they're playing. I got you. Now, the, the, what we understand. You recognize. The girls' team is playing. Is that right? We got a bunch of them. Yes. Sir. They are playing, so they're unable to be here. But we do have one of the coaches here, but ho who also happens to be the mayor of Eagleville, and uh, which we are very glad to have with us this evening. You know, all of you have heard me so many times stand up here and talk about the diamond to the west of here, and I'm talking tonight about two diamonds, and it comes from out there in that Eagleville way. Now. Some of you have brought from your schools and your districts out there, you've brought one state winner. I brought two tonight up here uh, to try to top you. If you've seen the Murfreesboro Post lately, you may have seen this page right here where it talks about these two state winners. And Eagleville now has become the title town. Can you believe that, boys? <laughs> the title town. Now this side over here, I sort of give them the nickname, the Golden Eagles, as you can see right here. <laughs> but so the show their dedication to what they were doing as far as going to the state, uh, they sort of changed their way of looking. In fact, tonight I started to do that, but you gotta have hair to do that. <laughs> so I didn't get into that and we didn't do that. But we do have two resolutions. We'd like to honor these two teams. We're very proud of them, what they've accomplished. Uh, these young ladies have also done the same thing. They worked hard in what was so interesting down there at Eagleville. You had baseball field over here, softball over here, and all the way through this drive that both of them were doing, one was usually playing over here, one was usually playing over here, and that community supported them both. And, um, and I often said that, you know, if there was a smart burglar anywhere, all they had to do was watch the newspaper and the schedules and they could see where they could have gone over there. But it was quite an exciting and wonderful nights that we had down there. I see uh, Coast Bassham here. I remember one of their last games they played there until they went on up to the state. Uh, I stood next to the dugout and he was standing there in front of me coaching. He didn't know I was standing back there. And coach, I listened to a lot of things you said in that dugout. And I, this guy talks more to himself than I do. But, uh, and I guess if I had all this many young men right there I was dealing with, I would too. But this has been an outstanding time for this town down there and for that school in particular. So I'll read these resolutions to you. Starting first with the girls softball.
Whereas the 2022 Igbo High School Girls softball team made school history by winning the first ever state championship in any sport or defeating their district rival Huntland by a score of 5-3 to three and was named the 2022 TWSAA Division 1A state champion with an overall season record of 21-8. and eight. And whereas after having to accept the runner-up trophy the previous year, the 2022 team was on a mission to be the first Eagles team to win the TWSAA state title which they did set the mark for future teams. And whereas the Eagle Girls softball team members are Zoe Ellis, Bella Bain, Abby Fiesel, Sarah Thompson, Piper Garner, Abby Stokes, Emma Kate Martin, Ella Whaley, Emmeline Witt, Presley Garner, Brandy Bain, Adner Buchanan, Layla Denton, Addison Linton, Rayleigh Bart Ward Warbitten, Ashley Herring, and manager Audrey Barrett. And whereas this has been a season to remember in the Igbo community, and special recognition is due to coaches Bridget Sanders, Chad Lehman, Tommy Bain, and Chris Ellis, along with Principal Tim Pettigo, and the school staff for their dedication and commitment when making this championship possible, as well as encouraging good sportsmanship and inspired team play. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Rutherford County Board of Commissioners that we extend this resolution of recognition to the 2022 Igbo High School Girls Softball Team managers and coaches for their successful year. Resolved this day, 16th day of June, 2022. Two. Mr. Chairman, I so move. I have a motion. Is there a second? Second. I have a second. All members on the second. Any further discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Congratulations. <laughs> I'm going to let uh, Coach Lehman now say something while he's standing up here, if he could. All right. We appreciate all the recognition we got. Uh, I'm sorry the girls couldn't be here tonight, but uh, they did work hard, and also the boys as well. Uh, Commissioner Reed said about the community support was unbelievable. Uh, they had we had it two different places. We was on the other side of Murfreesboro, which is like going to Kentucky, and over at our place, and people were making it from both places to the other, and uh, you, you just don't see that anywhere, and, and that's what makes our community special, and uh, it helps when y'all fund things and stuff like that for us, and the school board and things like that. So y'all y'all have a big role to play in that, and we do appreciate y'all for doing that and taking care of us out in Eagleville, and and that's this is what the fruits of your labor as well has now come through with these boys and girls being able to do what they do. So so we do appreciate you. Now for the resolution of recognition for the 2022 Igbo High School Boys Baseball Team. Whereas when a baseball team goes through a tournament without loss, outscores its opponents 40 to four in just four games. Plus the team to show unity dyed their hair blonde. It is only destined for great ending. The Eagle High School Eagles baseball team with a record of 37 and 2 were crowned TWSAA State Class 1A baseball champions for 2022. And whereas the team of the year 22 won their last 22 games and became the TWSAA 2022 champions, coming from the same Rutherford County High School, Eagleville, whose girls team just 24 hours before won the state championship in a softball with both teams winning by a score of five to three over their opponents with each getting their school's first ever state championships. And whereas the Eagle Boys baseball team members are Kaysen Lang, Lamb, Ben Thompson, Braden Baker, Maddox Bowden, Peyton Bullock, Brody McLemore, Colton Daniel, Nathan Brewer, Ethan Ledbetter, Ryan Winters, Caden Bassam, Bassham, Josh Jeffcoat, Tanner Mabry, Daniel Floyd, Brady Burns, Jake Bear, Marshall Spann, Will Frederick, Nolan Lane, Trent Young, Carter Rockhold, Daniel Messick, Colt Bassam, Ty Lynch, Bill Shapecoat, Alex Arnold, Elijah Watkins, Chryson Burks, Carson Pittman, John Mullins, 
Donovan Drew, and whereas this has been a season to remember in the Eagle community, and special recognition is due to the coaches Brandon Bassam, Mudcat Brewer, Todd Williamson, Marty McLarry, trainer Kevin Wolf, along with Principal Tim Pedigo and the school staff for their dedication and commitment which made this championship possible, as well as encouraging good sportsmanship and inspired team play. Now therefore be it resolved by the Rutherford County Board Commissioners that we extend this resolution of recognition to the 2022 Eagleville High School Boys Baseball Team, coaches and fans for their successful year. Resolved the 16th day of June, 2022. Mr. Chairman, I so move. I have a motion. Is there a second? Second by all commissioners. By the discussion, seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Congratulations, men. <laughs> Coach, it's your turn. First of all, I want to thank uh, Commissioner Reed for his involvement and in, in, in putting this together and for you guys for taking some time out of your night for having us. Really appreciate it. Again, you can see the support you know, from, from the people here to the guys up here. It's just a wonderful community to be in. The, the, the unity there uh, from dyeing our hair to just being part of the community, is, as Coach Lehman said, from the girls' state championship on Saturday to our, our crowd on Sunday was just, just truly incredible. And, and really, I think it's deserving for those two things to happen uh, twice in a 24-hour in a period. Again, just a wonderful staff, wonderful administration, coaching staff, uh, every, you know, all, our trainer, Kevin Wolf, everybody involved. Just you know, a season like this doesn't happen by accident. And it starts with these guys over here to my left and then everyone around that supported them from their parents and grandparents, again, administration, fan supporters, uh, all involved. Thank you again for having us. Hey, <laughs> Coach, I got one question. I, I, don't you think it'd be appropriate that Commissioner Reed and the, and the mayor put a little sun in on and kind of look like you guys. Is there a motion? <laughs> I'll second. You second. I will tell you, Mayor, uh, I'd have no problem with that at all. I mean, as far as that goes, but if you would join us, we would gladly do that. <laughs> Good. Go Eagles. Thank you. Go Eagles. <laughs> yeah, thank you all. Again, gentlemen, thank you all for representing Rutherford County. You made us proud this year bringing home a state championship. It's very important, and so did the ladies as well. So uh, go Eagles. Uh, now it's time for our public comments. Any public comments? If so, you can come to the well and uh, limit yourself to three minutes. I think everybody's leaving. They're not coming forward. Not seeing anyone come forward. I'd like to call on uh, Commissioner Reed, if you would please come forward for elections and confirmations. For elections and confirmations, our first item is the election of notaries. Uh, commissioners, you will find these on your iPad there. Listing of notaries may be found also, um, you may have received those also through SharePoint. Mr. Chairman, I move to confirm the election of these individuals as Rutherford County notaries. I have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Commissioner Cush. Any questions? Without objection, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Item two, steering would like to announce five vacancies on the Juvenile Detention Board. Item three, steering would like to announce two vacancies to the Rutherford County Board of Health. Item four, steering would like to confirm four appointments to the Rutherford County Board of Health. They are Tammy Adams, James Garner, Chad Mills, and Julia Steed, with their appointments to expire in 2026. Mr. Chairman, I so move. I have a motion. Uh, Commissioner second. Gurley on the second. Any questions? Without objection, 
All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Item five, steering would like to confirm two appointments to the Line Ball Library Board. They are Lori Wells and Larry Flowers with their appointments to expire 2025. Mr. Chairman, I so move. I have a motion. Second. Second, Commissioner Rather. Any questions? Without objection, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, motion carries. Item six, steering would like to confirm two appointments to community care of Rutherford County, CCRC, Board of Directors. They are Frankie Johnson and Joanne Medlin with their appointments to expire in 2025. Mr. Chairman, I so move. I have a motion. Second. Se second by Commissioner Cook and others. Any questions? Without objection, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Item seven, steering would like to confirm Craig Harris, Sonia Stevenson, Mike Curtis, Paul Scarlett, and Lisa Nolan to the Rutherford County Adult Entertainment Board. Mr. Chairman, I so move. I have a, I have a motion and a second. Any questions? Without objection. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, motion carries. Item eight, steering wishes to confirm Sharon Troutman to the Juvenile Detention Commissioner appointment. Mr. Chairman, I so move. Second. Sorry, I have a, um, I've got a motion and a second. Any questions? Seeing none, all those in favor, seeing five saying aye. Aye. All opposed, motion carries. Mr. Chairman, this is all the business of uh, the committee. Members, uh, it was brought to my attention from the, uh, our council that it's only four positions on, on the uh, Juvenile Detention Commission. Is that correct? It's only four because the mayor serves in that position. Commissioner Harris? May I approach? Yes. You didn't get supper tonight. Next members is uh, item J, resolution to approve the consent agenda. Chairman Pro Tem Phillips, you're recognized. Thank you, Mayor Catherine. Uh, there's one item that's been removed from the consent agenda. That's item number 22, resolution for military leave policy. It's not quite ready yet and needs a little more work, so that's been pulled. Uh, other than that, I've looked at the consent agenda. It took a little while. Uh, <laughs> and. <laughs> I find all of the uh, items appropriate for the consent agenda and without objection, um, I move that the consent agenda be approved as presented. Got a motion and a second that all items on consent be approved except for uh, item 22 to be bumped. Um, and a second, discussion, I, Commissioner I said, Allen. Thank you, I just have one question, Mr. Chairman, and this, we might be able to leave 29 on the consent agenda. I just had one point of clarification on it. Um, on 29, where we're setting up the um, committee for the distribution of the funds of the opioid settlement, we list all those positions there by their title, which implies they're coterminous. So as long as you hold that seat, then you would be on that board. Um, it says that there are no terms and that they serve at the pleasure of the county commission. The only one there that I really feel like is maybe a little problematic is the citizen because with there not being a term, then it puts the onus back on us as a commission to unseat someone or ask them to resign, something like that. So it just, it makes, I'm just curious if we don't maybe want to put a term just on that citizen. Okay. Commissioner Harris. 
I have no problem with that, Commissioner Allen. Uh, when this matter comes up during my steering report, if you'd like to make an amendment on the motion, then I'd be glad to entertain that. Okay, so noted. Chairman, I, I believe it should be pulled from the agenda if it's going to be discussed at steering. So I'd like to pull item number number 29 from the so, consent agenda to be so discussed. At items 22 and 29 will be bumped from consent. And um, so we have a motion and a second with those two items being bumped. All those in favor? Six, no. Call the roll, Madam Clerk. We're on the board, I'm sorry. Please cast your votes. Anyone that did not vote and wishes to vote or anyone who would like to change your vote, you may do so now. Record the vote, Madam Clerk. 20 yes. 20 yes, motion passes. Item K, any unfinished business? Seeing none, we have no unfinished business. Got uh, about four and a half minutes before our public hearing. Let's see how far we can get. These next two are going to be a little lengthy. Could be. On the insurance, stop loss. Mr. Chairman, Health can we insurance. just take a four minute break? We can take a four minute break. That being requested, <coughs> we'll stand in recess until 6.30. All right, let's come to order. <coughs> it is now time for our public hearing. Uh, Director DeMossi, call you to the well, and you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and good evening, members of the commission. Hope everybody's doing well tonight. Uh, we have two rezoning requests for your consideration tonight. The first is by Mr. Tim Whitlock, located along Woodbury Pike. Properties are currently zoned residential medium density, and they are asking for commercial general zoning on about roughly three acres of property. According to information submitted by the applicant, they plan to construct two different office buildings on these properties. Uh, the one at 52, excuse me, 5285 will be for a landscaping business, and the one at 5317 will be for a foundation contracting business. Minimal equipment storage on the site. Uh, they do anticipate a maximum of 10 employees at each business, typical operating hours Monday through Friday, 8 until 5 p.m., with some occasional Saturday hours, but nothing on Sunday. Uh, additional details can be found on your agenda pack or they're on your iPads, along with the concept plans which have been included uh, for both properties. Both of these are completely within the 100-year floodplain as delineated by FEMA. Uh, the applicant is aware of that and is understanding that if this application is approved that they will have to submit an engineered site plan for planning commission consideration and approval. Uh, access and parking, landscaping, and performance standards will all follow the currently approved uh, regulations in the zoning ordinance. Uh, during the meeting, the planning commission did have questions about the type of traffic and activity on the properties. Uh, the applicant answered that they plan on storing some mulch, sand, other gravel on the property. Heavy truck traffic would only be a few times a month. Beyond this, there was very little discussion on this item. Following the public hearing, the planning commission did recommend approval by a unanimous vote. And I'll be happy to answer any questions that you have. Any questions for Mr. DeMossi? No questions. All right. Let's call the Rutherford County Commission meeting into recess to hold our public hearing on this request. The public hearing is now in session. Anyone desiring to speak for or against the issue, if you would please come forward, state your name, your address, and if you are for or against the proposed request. You will please come forward. If you would state your name and your address, and if you're for or against. All right. Uh, my name is Tim Whitlock. I'm definitely for it. Uh, I own both the businesses. I plan on building two business two business locations on each property, 
They're both going to house both my businesses. One's a landscaping company, the other one's a construction company. They both sub out all their work. The only actual employees that they house in the building are managers mainly and office people. And I really just need a good location for the businesses. I think this is a great place to put the buildings. That's what I plan to do. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else that wants to speak for or against the proposed request? Seeing no one coming forward, and I declare the public hearing closed and Rutherford County Board of Commissioners back into session. Is there a motion? Commissioner P. Mr. Chairman, uh, this gentleman's done exactly what he should have done, which was talk to the people in the community. You know, there was no objections at the, our public hearings there. Therefore, I make a motion to approve. I have a motion for approval. Second. Second by Commissioner Piercy. Any further discussion or questions? Seeing none, we'll be on the board, members. Please cast your vote. Anyone that did not vote and wishes to vote, or anyone who would like to change your vote, you may do so now. Record the vote, Madam Clerk. 20 yes. 20 yes. Motion passes. Mr. DeBassi. Yes, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Our second and final zoning application tonight is by Mr. Steve Pierce from Middle Tennessee Developers, located along Central Valley Road. Uh, again, the property is zoned residential medium density. They are asking for a planned unit development for a residential subdivision. The applicant, again, is proposing to construct a residential development on this property. It will be comprised of both single-family detached and attached products. Uh, the product breakdown is listed on your iPad under our staff comments, along with some of the uh, minimum uh, house sizes and lot sizes, et cetera, uh, for both the attached and detached product. You'll see that the total number of units will be 159, broken down 58 detached single family and then 101 attached single family. This would be like townhome type developments. Attached units will have a minimum of a one car front entry garage. Detached will have a minimum of a two car front entry garage. All units are going to have driveways adequate for four parking spaces to help eliminate the need for any parking on the street. All elevations will be made up of masonry materials with vinyl only permitted in the trim and soffit areas. Sidewalks are being proposed for both sides of the street and street lighting is also being provided. The development will also be served with, served, excuse me, with a step system for sanitary sewage disposal and amenity areas have been included throughout the property. The single family detached product, and I'll call your attention to the pattern book, which is a separate attachment on your iPads. Uh, the single family detached roughly surrounds the attached product except to the east and southeast. The attached product will be adjacent to the step area to end of the development to the east, which is a similar type development. Uh, a portion of the amenity area will also buffer this development along the southeast corner. Again, I'll call your attention to the pattern book. The pattern book that you have tonight is changed slightly from what the Planning Commission saw, and that was to make sure that the connection between this property and the property to the east, which is another planned development, uh, the crossings at Walter Hill, to make sure that that lined up properly. So we confirmed that that is uh, the case now. Uh, again, as far as access and parking, a little bit more information on this particular item. Their primary access will be along Central Valley Road. Again, they do have stub streets uh, to the east and the south. No stub streets to the west as it's encumbered by a tributary to the east fork of the Stones River and also Liberty Valley subdivision. Traffic study was performed as part of this request. It actually included this property, the property to the east and the property to the south. Uh, the property to the east, when it was approved a few months ago, had already called for turn lane improvements and a signal at the intersection of Central Valley Road and Lebanon Pike. Uh, the applicant has, uh, or is in the process, and has worked out a develop a uh, agreement, excuse me, with that developer to help share some of the costs of that traffic light, so there will be one coming. Uh, there's also going to be turn lane improvements made as part of that, as well as turn lane improvements into this development along Central Valley Road. Uh, buffering is not generally required between single family developments, uh, but the layout of the property does show stream buffers around the northern and western property lines, uh, as well as the 10% open space set aside that is required for all planned developments. Uh, 
during the public hearing, the commission had questions about the sidewalks. Again, it was confirmed that they will be on both sides of the road and possible critical lots due to the 100-year floodplain. Those can be identified during the platting process. There were also questions about vehicle parking in the driveways, especially regarding the single-family attached product. The driveways looked a little smaller. Uh, the applicant's design engineer did confirm there was enough room for parking of four vehicles in all the driveways, and they did provide additional off-street parking areas, which you can see on the concept plan that's on the pattern book. Uh, he also said that he would be fine adding verbiage to the HOA documentation that prohibited parking in the public streets. That note was also added to the pattern book. Uh, they also made some changes uh, not allowing any 90 degree parking in cul-de-sacs. These will all be county streets. Uh, the traffic, or excuse me, the county engineer also gave an overview of the traffic improvements similar to what I gave just a moment ago uh, and drainage improvements also, which again, if this is approved, uh, this will have to go through the planning process and eventually we'll see construction drawings on that. Uh, following the public hearing, the planning commission did recommend approval again by a unanimous vote and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Any questions for Mr. DeMossi? Seeing none, I call the Rutherford County Commission meeting into recess to hold a public hearing on this request. The public hearing is now in session. Anyone desiring to speak for or against the issue, if you would please come forward, state your name, your address, and if you're for or against the proposed request. Seeing no one coming forward, I declare the public hearing closed and the Rutherford County Board of Commissioners back into session. I We'll entertain a motion. Commissioner Gammon. Mayor, I believe it's, that's in my district. I have met with him and discussed it. I know that he has reviewed and, and basically done everything that was asked of him. There's some, a lot of changes he had made here and there. So I would move that it be accepted. I have a motion for um, passage. And we have a second. Any further discussion? <coughs> Questions? Seeing none, you'll be on the board. Please cast your vote. Anyone that did not vote and wishes to vote or anyone who would like to change your vote, you may do so now. Record the vote, Madam Clerk. 19 yes. Motion passes. Thank you, Mr. DeMossi. Thank you, Mr. Next on the agenda is item M, reports from our standing committees. Our first report is Budget Finance and Investment Committee. Commissioner P, you're recognized. In case you couldn't tell from the consent agenda, toward the end of the year, we have a lot of uh, catching up to do. We've got uh, several items this evening. And the first item is M1A, which is the property casualty, cyber liability, and crime insurance resolution, whereas Assured Partners has requested updated premium amounts for Rutherford County property casualty, liability, crime, and cyber liability insurance for the upcoming year, whereas the annual premium for property insurance coverage from Liberty Mutual is $1,121,998, effective July 1st, 2022, and whereas the annual premium for casualty and liability insurance coverage from Princeton is $1,360,886, effective July 1st, 2022. And whereas the annual premium for crime insurance coverage from Travelers is $5,642, effective July 1st, 2022. And whereas the annual premium for cyber liability insurance coverage from Cowbell Cyber Incorporated is $68,596, effective July 1st, 2022. Therefore, be it resolved by the Rutherford County Board of Commissioners that the county mayor be authorized to execute all required documents uh, renewing the property, casualty, liability, crime, and cyber liability insurance coverage with Liberty Mutual, Princeton, 
Travelers Cowbell Cyber Incorporated through Assured Partners as a broker effective July 1st, 2022 in accordance with the detailed coverage breakdown. A copy of the same being attached hereto as Exhibit 1 and incorporated herein by reference as if set forth herein at length verbatim. Resolved the 16th day of June, 2022. Mr. Chairman, I so move. I have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Second. Mr. Serino. Any questions or discussion? Seeing none, members, we're on the board. Please cast your vote. Anyone that did not vote and wishes to vote or anyone who would like to change your vote, you may do so now. Record a vote, Madam Clerk. <coughs> 20 yes. Motion passes. Resolution M1B is covering our stop loss. Whereas the current stop loss coverage on Rutherford County's medical plan is $750,000 per covered member, and whereas Cigna has proposed to renew the stop loss coverage at the pooling level of $300,000 per covered member with the monthly rate of $59.03 per employee for a total annual premium of $879,822.87. And whereas the coverage is effective January 1st, 2023 through December 1st, 2023. Therefore, be it resolved by the Rutherford County Board of Commissioners that the county mayor be and is hereby authorized to execute all required documents for and on behalf of the Rutherford County to renew the stop loss coverage on Rutherford County's medical plan with the pooling levels to decrease to 300,000 per covered member with a monthly rate of $59.03 per employee and a total annual premium of $879,822.87, effective January 1st, 2023, through December 31st, 2023. Resolved this 16th day of June, 2022. Mr. Chairman, I so move. I have a motion. Is there a second? Got a second? Mr. Chairman, I'd yes. like to make a quick statement here. Sure. If you as a uh, commissioner or employee that's affected by this, you're actually not, if it is an increased uh, benefit to you, then you should not vote on it. And I'll refer to our uh, attorney if you have any questions on that. I'm not sure that this is an increase to me, so I'm gonna abstain from voting on this item. Mr. Gurley. If I'm hearing what I'm hearing, we're going down on a limit that an employee might incur from 750000 to 300000 That seems to be a significant decrease. Uh, it really doesn't take long to rack up that kind of medical bill. That means after 300000 then they will not be covered under medical, the county's medical. Or can you en enlighten me? Yes, it's excess. It's like insurance for that above. We're self-insured, so for a claim that hits over that amount, an excess carrier, a, another carrier covers it. Am I right, Ed? Thank you, reinsurance. Okay, okay, so this is above and beyond. Okay, thank you. I have a motion and a second. Any further questions? Members uh, will be on the board. Please cast your vote. Anyone that did not vote and wishes to vote, or anyone who would like to change your vote, you may do so now. Record the vote, Madam Clerk. 16 yes, four abstain. Motion passes. Next item is M1C, and uh, I will 
make the sta same statement on this just for general purpose. This is for active employees only. If you're a retired employees or your spouse is a retired employee, this does not affect you. Uh, item M1C, whereas in an effort to generate sufficient revenue to cover the claim cost in the employee insurance fund, recommendations were presented for consideration to the health, dental, and vision insurance premium rates for active employees effective January 1st, 2023. Therefore, be it resolved by the Rutherford County Board of Commissioners that the premium schedule attached hereto as Exhibit 1 and incorporated therein by reference, as if set forth herein at length verbatim, be adopted as the health, dental, and vision insurance premium rates for active employees effective January 1st, 2023, resolved the 16th day of June, 2022. Mr. Chairman, I so move. I have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Commissioner Phillips, any questions or discussion? Seeing none, we'll be on the board. Please cast your vote, members. Court to vote, Madam Clerk. 18 yes, one abstain. Motion passes. Item M1D, uh, this is similar, uh, only this is for retirees. Whereas in an effort to generate sufficient revenue to cover the claim costs in the employee insurance fund, recommendations were presented for the consideration as to the health, dental, and vision insurance premium rates for retirees effective January 1st, 2023. Therefore, be it resolved by the Rutherford County Board of Commissioners that the premium schedules attached hereto as Exhibit 1 and incorporated herein by reference, as if set forth herein at length verbatim, be adopted as the health, dental, and vision insurance premium rates for retirees, effective January 1st, 2023, resolved this 16th day of June, 2022. Mr. Chairman, I so move. I have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Commissioner Phillips, any questions or discussion? Seeing none, we'll be on the board. Please cast your vote. Anyone that did not vote and wishes to vote, or anyone who would like to change your vote, you may do so now. Record the vote, Madam Clerk. 16 yes, 4 abstain. Motion passes. Item M1E, this is actually a resolution to purchase property for the last Cassis ballpark. Whereas Simmons Builders Incorporated, the owner, on certain real property located on Las Casas Pike, Las Casas, Tennessee, 37085, tax map 44, parcel 24.02, the property, as further depicted on the attached Exhibit A, and whereas said property is adjacent to other county property utilized for county purposes, and whereas the owner has offered to sell approximately three acres of the property as further depicted on the attached Exhibit A to the county for $150,000 in consideration for a general warranty deed conveying the property to the county. And whereas the Rutherford County Board of Commissioners believe it is in the best interest of the county to purchase the property for $150,000. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Rutherford County Board of Commissioners that the county mayor and any other necessary officials of Rutherford County shall be, and the same hereby are, authorized to execute an approximate commercial purchase and sale agreement and any other documents necessary to purchase the approximately three acres of property for $150,000 plus closing, closing costs to include attorney's fees, title search, appropriate title insurance if necessary, and other associated closing fees, and necessary survey and engineering costs, and proceed to close and purchase the property in consideration for an appropriate general warranty weed deed conveying the property to the county, subject to review and approval by the county attorney. Be it further resolved that the general fund be amended as follows to appropriate funds to purchase the 
the property and pay any necessary closing costs and necessary surveying engineering cost. A decrease uh, for restricted for capital projects of 160,000 with an increase of land for $160,000. Resolved the 16th day of June, 2022. Mr. Chairman, I so move. I have, have a motion. Second. Commissioner Piercy on a second. Any questions? Commissioner yes. Gurley. Could I get a brief explanation of exactly what this property, I was looking at it on the map, is going to be used for? Uh, yes, sir. I, no, me. So, in the placement of our new uh, public health and safety building uh, in front of the fire hall uh, in Las Casas, it was determined by, and I think uh, Commissioner Piercy and our architect, uh, Bart Klein, and I believe uh, PBA Chairman Stan Vault, they all met at the location and felt because of where the ball fields are located, it would be best if we could possibly purchase a drive to get back to the ball fields instead of cutting in front of or are so close to the proposed building of the new public health and safety building. So that is the purpose of purchasing the property. Thank you. Any, anything else, Commissioner Pershing, I've left out? Let me add to that just a little. When we when we met out there with the architect and the PBA, the building really didn't fit the property like it needed to without encroaching over into the uh, driveways for the ballpark. And plus it was going to edge on over into the small park that's there that was built by the, the volunteer fire department and maybe an Eagle Scout, so forth. It's pretty uh, sentimental property there and we didn't want to disturb it. The gentleman that owns the property to the west, which is Mr. Simmons, has agreed to sell us three acres from one of his tracks where he's going to build a new home on for the right of way. And then the additional land of the three acres is in the back that they can use for parking. This will enable the ball club, the ball parents, the players, the grandparents, everybody to enter through a designated road and park in the back and not be blocking the fire engine or the, the ambulance or whatever coming out of the public safety building. It, it would be a great investment for the community. It would be a great investment for Rutherford County because <coughs> kids from all over the county come out there and play ball at this park. It's one of the few left that county kids can can join a team that's not a travel team or whatever and come and play. And Ms. Cook asked me at the uh, property management what I was doing for the seniors. Well, Ms. Cook, Ms. Cook, all the grandparents can come and watch their grandchildren play ball. <laughs> so, so we've got that covered really good. I, I would encourage you to do this because this is an investment for the county. It's not just my district. It gives the kids somewhere to play. The, chil the children that were up here earlier from Mr. Reed's district, I guarantee you some of them played on a field similar to that, t-ball, coach pitch, and so forth, to get good enough to be where they are today. So, Thank you. So we're investing in, in land for recreation which the county is involved in very little and probably should be involved in a lot more than what we are. So that's the gist of it. We're providing a recreational opportunity in the community. Is that the bottom line of what this is gonna do? We're giving back to the community something other than a structure they might see once a year, like a building, a school or whatever. This, this will be an invest investment for the county. It's a one-time expense. I, I, I agree. I'm all for the county getting involved in more recreational uh, properties and opportunities for our kids because that way we keep them out of jail. <coughs> <coughs> Members, might I, I remind you that um, over the course of the last couple of years, we have taken property that we owned that uh, was just sitting vacant and we've sold it at auction and put it back on the tax roll, uh, but uh, and that money has gone into the general fund. So this this would help cover uh, that that money that we now have uh, by selling some of that property we weren't using and putting it to good use. I have a motion to second. Any further discussion? 
Commissioner Reed. Mr. Chairman, I think from the very beginning when we were discussing the building out there for Las Casas, it has always been a, a discussion about the placement of that building and how it would fit there. And I think as we went about this, that building was fitting there somewhat, somewhat like a hand in a glove to begin with. And where those fields are and where the people come in, it was always somewhat of, well, is this going to work? Is this going to be the way we need to do it. Plus, any of you that's ever been out there, you've seen the rock wall. If you ever know the history of Las Casas, you've been taught the rock wall. If you married anybody from Las Casas, you had to participate with the rock wall because that was where you went to go and kiss your girlfriend out there. And there have been people that have voiced pretty much, I think you could go and move the Statue of Liberty before we move that rock wall in Las Casas. But also those fields out there, if you ever go out there doing ball season, parking is all over that area out there. This will also help with our traffic as far as that public safety building is concerned. This will allow the, uh, all the ambulances and fire engines when they are called to be able to get out of that building when they need to during tournament time and things of this type. Plus it also gives the Las Casas community, as, just as the commissioner down here said, just what you saw right here tonight and what Igable enjoys down there, they have grown up doing that too. The same thing is out there too. So I think any time we can give back and give that to them, I think we should. Any further comments? We have a motion and a second. Members will be on the board. Please cast your vote. Anyone that did not vote and wishes to vote or anyone who would like to change your vote, you may do so now. Record the vote, Madam Clerk. 20 yes. Motion passes. Item M1F, a resolution approving Michael Smith as the finance director. Whereas the current finance director, Lisa A. Nolan, desires to retire as soon as a replacement can be found. And whereas the Budget, Finance, and Investment Committee has been searching for a replacement and advertised on the county website and on various job boards on the internet for resumes from qualified candidates. And whereas the Budget, Finance, and Investment Committee interviewed candidates and has recommended Michael Smith for the Finance Director of Rutherford County with an annual salary of $161,000. Therefore, be it resolved by the Rutherford County Board of Commissioners that Michael Smith is hereby appointed as the Finance Director for Rutherford County with an annual salary of $161,000, effective August 1, 2022. Resolved the 16th day of June, 2022. Mr. Chairman, I so move. I have a motion. Is there a second? second. Got a second, Commissioner Piercy. Any further discussion or questions? Mr. Stevens. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want to briefly explain why I will be voting no on this. I was um, the one person that voted no with the Budget Committee this past week, and I want you to understand why it has nothing to do with the applicant. I voted for him on the first round. I think he's very qualified, and I think he will do a good job. I've got full confidence in him. But at our meeting on June 2nd, uh, we were down to two finalists in our second batch of, of applicants, and we said, at the meeting that we were going to nominate one of these individuals, contact her, and if she did not accept the position, uh, the consensus was, after I asked about it, was that we would go back to the uh, number two person that night. But we didn't do that. So we said we were gonna do something, and we didn't do it. And given the sensitive nature of this, I think that if we end up getting sued, that we're gonna be in a difficult position. And I wanted it very clear in the minutes on that budget committee meeting that I objected to the process and didn't want anything else to do with it because I think it's been tainted. And so I'm gonna very respectfully vote no tonight and I just want you to understand it's nothing to do with the applicant, it's about the process. And if we do end up getting sued, uh, they will not be able to blame this commissioner for that. Any further questions or discussion? Commissioner McAdoo.
Well, since he brought it up and we know our record on being sued, uh, can I hear from the town, uh, county attorney what he think about the procedure that was done at budget that night? <clears throat> um, two things on that, Commissioner. Um, I'm, I'm not abreast of all the, the facts of, of that. I was not at that meeting. <clears throat> um, secondly, it probably is a more prudent course of action to um, probably not comment on that from a legal perspective uh, for this body. And um, I'm happy to look at it if the um, uh, com if the commission wants to go ahead and approve this uh, contingent upon if there is any issue uh, with it, uh, that is an option for this body. I just hate to pass on any sort of legal explanation when I don't have all the facts before me uh, on that. But in terms of speaking, even if I did, I'd be hesitant to do so publicly um, to talk about any sort of threatened litigation uh, in that regard. Mr. Chairman. Commissioner. Uh, McAdoo. Commissioner McAdoo. Uh, so is it appropriate at this time if we want to add an amendment to this motion that we can? You can we have a motion and it is, you can make an, an amendment to be voted upon. My amendment is that uh, upon the attorney general reviewing this, I mean the county attorney reviewing this and make sure that we'll within the legality of what we brought up at that meeting that night. That's an informal amendment to that motion. I'll second that. I have a motion uh, on the, the amended motion is to have the county attorney to make sure that everything was done legally and above board. We have a second. Any discussion on the amendment? Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. A couple of things. Uh, Mr. Smith was our first choice uh, because of proposed pay table at that time. It wasn't accepted. He uh, actually reapplied and, you know, did accept. Uh, I think it's inappropriate that Commissioner Stevens even brought this up on the floor publicly. Uh, my opinion personally, you know, could have went to our attorney privately, could have talked to individuals privately, which is what should have been done. He's an attorney, he knows that. Uh, having said that, the discussion he's talking about was not voted on, period. So I'll leave it at that. I think that Mr. Smith is the best candidate. He was actually our first choice, uh, our second choice, uh, Carolyn was a very good candidate. She turned us down. Michael accepted an offer that we put out there. Commissioner Gooch. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> Excuse me. I don't think that this amendment is right uh, for several reasons. So Mr. Smith needs to give notice. I think the appropriate notice uh, that he may have chosen would be 30 days. We want to have this position filled by August 1st. And to delay it until our, and I'm, I'm sure a legal opinion can be made by our next uh, commission meeting, is just pushing it. Um, how many times have we changed our mind? We got sued for every time that we vote it to change our mind, we'll be in court every day. And I just don't see that this, and I'm not even saying we changed our mind. I think what Commissioner uh, Chairman P has stated is, is on target, but I just don't feel like this amendment is, is, is necessary. I think we need to make the decision tonight so that we can move forward to have this position filled by August the 1st. Commissioner. One more thing. Uh, I don't think this amendment is being fair to the candidate. You know, he's got to go to his current employer and turn in a notice or not. And if you leave him hanging, well, I wouldn't turn in a notice. Would you? I don't think you would. Uh, and I'd urge you to vote this amendment down and we'll go ahead and vote up or down one way or the other so Mr. Smith knows where he stands. 
Don't we have another commission meeting on the 27th? There is another commission meeting. Well, any further discussion on the amendment? With Commissioner Phillips. I'm not 100% sure I understand the, the amendment. Would the amendment delay the job offer? Not, not the way that I understand it. So where do, I, where do I hear about this delaying turning in notices and stuff? So if I if I may interject, and, and I, I, the clerk might need to read back um, what the amendment is, but if the majority will of the body is to defer action on this, then it probably is not wise to appoint the individual contingent on it because we don't want the individual relying to his detriment in any way, shape, or form if the body comes back in next session and yanks the offer. That also probably would not be fair. Um, again, I don't have all of the facts here. I do know that the this uh, director position serves at the pleasure of the county commission. Under the private act that established this position in the budget committee, the budget committee is the recommending body for this position and the county commission appoints it and can dismiss uh, this position. Now, in terms of the procedure that led to this, that's something that I, I just have not investigated at all. Uh, from a general perspective, uh, however, as long as open meetings have been complied with uh, and that um, uh, there wasn't a vote that actually took place that wasn't followed through on, that may be a concern. But again, um, commissioners, uh, the commission dictates its rules and procedures itself for how it goes about things. And um, so if what led to this point was open and transparent, um, then the likelihood of exposure and risk of lawsuit is likely reduced. Commissioner Gooch. And I can guarantee every one of you that this meeting, these meetings were open and transparent and advertised. <laughs> There's no need to delay this. It's, please, there's no need. Question, Commissioner McAdoo. Well, I hope that committee is made up of seven members and I'm hearing a doubt from one member. What about the other six members? I've heard from one, two, three. There's four more members on that committee. So we got time to ask each member of that committee, what they think about that committee meeting. Don't do it tonight. We're looking at one commissioner saying we're gonna hear about a lawsuit. I think we should take the time tonight and ask them. Do nothing but get it in the record that we did investigate. So if something come down the pike, we'd have something <coughs> that we can fall back on. Members, uh, I've been instructed or told by council the vote by budget the other night, which is the recommending body to come before this full commission was 6-1. One, one, one dissenting vote, 6-1. That's how it's presented to the full 21 body here tonight. Any further discussion on the amendment? Commissioner Allen. Thank you. There's just one point of clarification on that. The the vote was 6-1 um, on that candidate. When it came time, though, for us to choose our candidates, choose who we wanted to make offers to, um, Commissioner Stevens is correct in terms of the first time we went through this, the first time we went through um, interviewing and making an offer, we had two nominees, and in, two people were nominated. We chose to make an offer to one. That person did not accept. Instead of automatically going to our number two person, we came back, we opened it up, um, and that never really felt quite right to me. I felt like it, I felt like had I, if I was running a business and had two candidates and my one didn't take it, I would go to number two. 
Instead, we re-examined the whole process, we re-examined the pay, decided that we need to increase the pay, and we might get different candidates if we paid more in line with what current market rate was. So we reopened it, advertised. That's when this round of interviews came through. We didn't re-interview applicants from the first round. We only interviewed new applicants, but we kind of we kept some of these others in our back pocket knowing if they were still interested, they would still be considered. And that's the category Mr. Smith fell into. So when we decided who we were going to nominate and that we were going to make an offer to one, that was the 4-3 vote for Mr. Smith. At that point, Commissioner Stevens, knowing that we'd sort of clumsily handled it the first time, unintentionally just didn't make ourselves clear, he said, let's please define what the process is going to be if our number one does not accept. In that meeting, we did not make a motion, we did not vote on it, but it was clearly understood, at least to this commissioner, and, and the chairman said, that's what we will do. We will offer to number two, unless I hear an objection, that's what we will do. Nobody objected, so there wasn't a vote, but in my mind, there was a clear intent that that was the plan, was to go back to the number two candidate at that point, which at that moment was not Mr. Smith. If I, and I said this in a subsequent meeting, if I misunderstood, that's on me. And I didn't make a motion, <coughs> so now it was time to decide who we were gonna make an offer to, how we were gonna proceed. When the decision was made that we were gonna pursue Mr. Smith, um, and we needed to negotiate with him in good faith, I got on board and got behind that, but I did, I did make my feelings known in that meeting as well, that I was concerned that we had implied a, a, a course of action that we were now ignoring. I did express those concerns and I'm on record saying that as well. So just like Commissioner <coughs> Stevens, I, have, I think Mr. Smith will do a fine job. We do have, Commissioner Gurley said this, we have a meeting in two weeks, less than two weeks. We have time for county attorney to look at the meetings, look at the minutes, just make sure that he has peace of mind that we honored the intent of the process. If this, if this body does not want to delay, want to do that, I, I have no grand objection to that. Again, like I said, I think Mr. Smith will be fine. This is purely a cover your bases. Just, and, and that's the only thing, that, the only reason I believe Commissioner Stevens spoke up was to say, because this body was not part of those conversations and if you were not following this all along the way, you might have missed one of these steps and it just might be worthwhile for you to know that we might have stumbled a couple of times. Might or might not, I don't know, but that's I believe his, his point in just making it clear. Members, we have Commissioner P. I'll take full responsibility for a misstep, and that misstep was not clearly saying this is what we're going to do and voting on it. That was my mistake, and sincerely apologize. However, he's not the second choice. He's not the third choice or the first, fourth choice. He's our first choice and always has been. And I think you look around at the people on budget, and they're going to tell you the same thing. He was our first choice, was that correct? Was that correct, Mr. Stevens? Uh, he was our first choice in the first Thank round. Thank you, that's what I wanted, and I'm gonna cut you off just like an attorney does. That's exactly <laughs> what he was. He was first choice, and I'd ask you to vote on that basis. Members, we have, we're, read, read the motion, please. Uh, the amendment. The amendment to the county attorney to make sure that we are in the legal guidelines with the selection. You've, you've, heard, you've heard the reading of the, the um, amendment, the language, members, I'm gonna ask you to be on the board, please cast your vote. I'm sorry, maybe it's my hearing aids that need to be turned up. L Lisa, could you sorry. possibly read that again? Read one more time, Madam Clerk. The amendment is they're asking to defer this to the county attorney to make sure that we are in the legal guidelines with this selection. Let me try it again. No, so, so getting back to my question, do, do we answer that question? 
are we delaying the hiring by voting for the amendment? Yes, are we, you are. Yes. Legal counsel says yes. All right, members. Everybody ready to vote on the amendment. On the motion as amended. We're voting on the amendment. Members, please cast your vote. Anyone that did not vote and wishes to vote or anyone who would like to change your vote, you may do so now. Record the vote, Madam Clerk. Five yes, 15 no. Motion fails. Back on the motion. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on the motion will be on the board. Members, please cast your vote. Anyone that did not vote and wishes to vote or anyone who would like to change your vote, you may do so now. Record the vote, Madam Clerk. 19 yes, one no. 19 yes, motion passes. So we now, well, as of August 1st, I think, uh, is the correct date. Is that That's right? correct. A, we're still not letting you go for a while. But uh, Mr. Smith is in the audience. Uh, you're welcome to come up for a moment, say hi, and without please stand. A, without objection, we'll spin the rules to allow Mr. Smith, if you would like to come up, Mr. Smith. Congratulations. Welcome. Yes, sir. I have a lot to say, so but thank you. <laughs> thank you, I appreciate it. This is, this is way better than the school board meeting I was supposed to be at, so. He's, he's been out walking roofs today and in, inspecting, so he was complaining about being a little rumpled. He looks better than I do every day, so anyway, welcome, Michael. Thank you. Thank I you. appreciate it. Yeah, congratulations. Mr. Smith, welcome to politics. Next is our uh, health and education uh, committee report. Commissioner Allen, you did have a. Uh, yeah, thank you, Mr. Question. Chairman. Yeah, I just want to let everyone know we usually have to adjust the June meeting because of the daytime meeting that the um, county commission has. So we would normally meet on the 28th of this month. We'll be meeting on the 21st. So it'll be next Tuesday at 530. Thank you. Please mark your calendars. Meeting health and ed on 21st. Commissioner McAdoo, no report. Commissioner Reed, public safety. Public safety is also moving next Monday evening here at 5.30. All right. That's your calendars. Chairman Cush, you do have a, um, a special meeting. Uh, the Solid Waste Subcommittee of Public Works and Planning meets June 22nd at 3.30 in this building before budget. Get that, 3.30 p.m. So anybody wants to attend, or especially members, 3.30. Chairman Harris, steering committee, you recognize? All right, gentlemen and ladies, the first thing that we're going to be uh, reading on a resolution is to approve our uh, private act, chapter number 65, Rutherford County Board of Juvenile Detention Center, Commissioner's Act of 2022. Whereas at its regularly scheduled session on March 17, 2022, the Rutherford County Commission approved by a two-thirds vote 
a resolution requesting passage of the private act to establish the Rutherford County Board of Juvenile Detention Center commissioners and corresponding proposed private act and whereas Tennessee legislation considered and approved the Rutherford County Commission proposed private act subsequently assigning it to private act chapter number 65 entitled Rutherford County Board of Juvenile Detention Center Commissioners Act of 2022 whereas pursuant to the private act section 17 of the Rutherford County Commission must approve the private act by a two-thirds vote for it to become effective now therefore be it resolved by the Rutherford County Board of Commissioners that the private act chapter number 65 entitled the Rutherford County Board of Juvenile Detention Center Commissioners Act of 2022 a copy of which is attached here to as exhibit A and incorporated herein verbatim shall be and hereby is approved. Be it further resolved that the notice of such approval shall be sent by the Rutherford County Kirk to the State of Tennessee Secretary of State within 30 days. Resolved this 16th day of June 2022 by a two thirds vote of the County Legislative Body of Rutherford County, Tennessee. Mr. Chairman, I so move. I have a motion and a second. Is there a second? Got a second, Mr. Reed. Others? Any further discussion? Madam Clerk. Let's go on the roll. We'll be on the board. Please cast your vote. Anyone that did not vote and wishes to vote or anyone who would like to change your vote, you may do so now. Record the vote, Madam Clerk. 20 yes. Motion passes. Members, uh, go back up under the resolution on the consent agenda. We bumped item 29 resolution establishing the select committee for distribution of funds from the opioid settlement proceeds we'll put that in right under a and make that b before we we have to do that before we actually confirm the um, um, members of that that um, committee so commissioner Harris. All right, commissioners, this is for us to establish a select committee for the distribution of funds from the opioid settlement proceeds. Um, to try to, to uh, catch you back up, we have been awarded monies from uh, settlement, which will be uh, distributed to the county over 18 years. Uh, based on the current uh, set up the way they have it right now is out of all that 100%, we figure we're gonna get somewhere in the neighborhood of $500,000 a year for 18 years. But 25% of that is what we wanna do with it. Whatever Rutherford County and you commissioners agreed is what we can do with it. The 75% is something that we had to go through abatement, which means we had to petition the state of Tennessee to get what we want for them to, to uh, fund our projects. Uh, we are forming this committee so that we can deal with all those things and to have, and I'll, and I'll explain this in, in the resolution to where we'll be able to appropriate those funds. We still have to go through budget. We still have to be approved by the county commission. So this is a committee to, bring, to hear people's requests, to hear the, our first responders, to see, see areas that which we can address uh, this fight with this opioid. So, you want me to go ahead and read it? Yes, sir. Whereas the opioid epidemic continues to impact communities in the United States and the state of Tennessee and Rutherford County, Tennessee. Whereas Rutherford County joined in certain lawsuits against opioid manufacturers, distributors, and retailers. Whereas Rutherford County entered into certain settlement agreements, and whereas the Tennessee Legislative enacted Public Chapter Number 491, which addresses the allocation of funds from certain opioid litigation settlements. Whereas Rutherford County previously entered into a Tennessee State Subdivision Opioid Abatement Agreement, which sets forth the framework for a unified plan for the proposed allocation and use of settlement funds. 
Whereas Rutherford County will receive certain distribution payments over the course of approximately 18 years and out of the settlement proceeds. And whereas some of the settlement proceeds will not have restrictions on their use while others will require the approval from the State of Tennessee Opioid Abatement Council, which oversees the Opioid Abatement Trust Fund. Whereas it is necessary to establish a select committee to explore, study, and recommend how the county should spend funds received from the op opioid settlement proceeds. Now therefore, be it resolved by the Rutherford County Board of Commissioners that the select committee known as the Select Committee for the Distribution of Funds from Opioid Settlement Proceeds shall be and is hereby established for the purpose of exploring, studying, and recommending how the county should spend opioid settlement proceeds. Be it further resolved that this select committee shall be comprised of seven members consisting of the following. Chairman of Steering, Chairman of Public Safety, Chairman of Budget, Superintendent of the Rutherford County Correctional Work Center, Director of the Rutherford County Probation Department, Representative from the Rutherford County Recovery Courts, and Citizen at Large. Be it further resolved that there shall be no terms of the Office of Compensation for those who are appointed to this select committee, and this select committee shall serve at the pleasure of the Rutherford County Board of Commissioners. Resolved the 16th day of June, 2022. Mr. Chairman, I so move. I have a motion and a second. Commissioner Phillips. I'd like to add an amendment to the citizen at large be a four-year term. I have an amendment um, for a four-year term. For the citizen at large, we have a second. All those in favor of the, mo of the amendment signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Back. Commissioner Allen. Thank you. Um, I apologize for not thinking about this until just now. I would have brought it up sooner. When we first talked about getting this money, I remembered that um, the health department had managed the tobacco settlement money when we'd gotten that. We did such a good job managing that tobacco money that when other counties were not being effective with theirs, where they were not seeing good results, they forfeited that money back to the state and we kept getting more money, kept getting more money. And so my, my question to you is, and I don't know, I, I didn't follow this close enough to know this answer, but did you consider having the health department director or their designee as part of this committee? Well, yes, and it was LaShawn Matthews, and she is, went to work for the state of Tennessee, and she will be over our county as far as uh, opioid education and department. So she's actually going to be helping us. But she, she does, I'm going to say, LaShawn, what did I say? Yeah, she works there too. a lot. LaShawn works there with LaShawn. Well, so just like these, these are titles, these are not names, these are positions. I think it might be worthwhile to have the title, have that position tied to this committee. Seems like, so like we've got Chairman of Steering, Chairman of Public. We don't know that LaShan's always going to have that particular job. So my thinking is just, would it be worthwhile to have the director of the Rutherford County Health Department or their designee as part of the committee? I think that the seven that we got is, um, I mean, we'll work closely with the uh, health department, but I mean, I feel like these seven right here are the areas that we want to have a concern with. Any further questions? Back on the motion as amended. Seeing none, let's, let's go on the board. Members, please cast your vote. Are we voting on the amendment? We already have. I thought we voted on the we Okay, so the we're now voting on the motion as, as amended. amended. Yes, sir. Please cast your vote. Anyone that did not vote and wishes to vote or anyone who would like to change your vote, you may do so now. Record a vote, Madam Clerk. 19, yes. Motion passes. Uh, before you continue, Commissioner Harris, let me, let me step in. I just want to uh, take a mo moment of privilege. I, I want to say thank you going back to the previous commission before I came on. Uh, with with Mayor Burgess and the previous commission who chose and had the foresight 
to enter into a lawsuit. We hired our own attorneys on this opioid crisis. Um, and that foresight has played out well uh, that you took the action that you did for those who were on the commission back then. Um, so we've gone down this road for the last four years. Uh, our state attorney general, they filed also uh, for the state of Tennessee and then they came to us and asked us to join in with them, uh, which we folded our lawsuit and, and fell in with them just to make sure that we got a greater percentage than those counties or cities who did not file suit, which worked out to our advantage. But the crisis has gotten worse since that has, has started, and it continues to get worse. And the fentanyl that continues to come across our borders, I hope this committee don't let that money go anywhere else than fighting this issue that's, that's plaguing our community. Uh, Commissioner Harris told me today of somebody that was in one of his videos passed uh, from fentanyl. Uh, talked to somebody just last week who um, a, a prominent physician here in town, their son passed uh, from getting tainted fentanyl uh, by doing drugs and, and it's affecting all strata of our community. So future commissioners, please make sure that this continues to fight, working with all law enforcement, doing whatever we can to help save these kids. Because the cartel and those uh, folks that's coming from China, it's being manufactured in China and coming through Mexico and it's coming across our porous borders and coming straight on Interstate 40, right up into Arizona and straight into on 40, right into our community. So please, um, uh, I think we're headed in the right direction. We've done the right things, but let's do everything we can to help save this next generation. Commissioner Harris, you're recognized. Well, you, uh, you, you all know that I've been dealing with this for four years. You all know my passion behind it. And like he said, I had somebody that was doing, y'all had watched the video, y'all seen it. And one of the member, one of the, the uh, people on the video uh, died yesterday. So we're all kind of, you know, it's just, uh, I don't, I want to tell y'all, y'all are doing a good thing. This is a good thing. This is something we have people on here that are dedicated to trying to do something on this. Do they have the ham? Do they I'm supposed to have? There it is. This right here is something. This we had a task force that the mayor uh, created, which will be dissolved. But this is one of the things y'all gave me money to to put billboards up around the county. You gave me money to send this mailer out to 20,000 households with people with children 11 to 17. This went out, so this is something that, that you commissioners have done to let us somehow find a better way to, to bring awareness to this. Uh, you know, I wear this badge with honor. I am, uh, I'm gonna keep fighting. If I lose my election, I'm gonna keep fighting. So. This is something that I think is uh, uh, good, and um, and I want to commend you guys because I think a lot of y'all really want to do this, and a lot of y'all really want to to help this county. And I've talked to y'all personally, and I know that y'all want to. And this is a problem, and we can work. And this and this group is good. So I want to go ahead and um, uh, make a motion to select committee for the distribution of funds for the opioid settlement proceeds as followed: William Cope. Superintendent of Rutherford County Correctional Work Center, Alyssa Phillips, Director of Rutherford County Probation Department, Lori Flippo, Rutherford County Recovery Courts, Pettis Reed, Chairman of Public Safety, Craig Harris, Chairman of Steering Committee, Robert P., Chairman of Budget Committee, Tricia Breeding, Citizen at Large. Mr. Chairman, I so move. I have a motion. Is there a second? Got a second. Paul Johnson. Members, I'm going to ask you to once again. You'll be on the board. Please cast I, your vote. I have a question. Commissioner Piercy, hang on. Go ahead. The August 4th election, should any of these chairman positions change, will that chairman be automatically put on, on your board? Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you. All right. Please cast your vote.
Anyone that did not vote and wishes to vote or anyone who would like to change your vote, you may do so now. Record to vote, Madam Clerk. 19 yes. Motion passes. All right, commissioners, next uh, is a resolution changing the policy handbook concerning chairman of the commission. Whereas the Rutherford County Steering Committee has recommended certain amendments to the Rutherford County Board of Commissioners rules and regulations to account for a county commissioner being elected by the county commission as chairman of the commission. Whereas it is in the best interest of Rutherford County that the Rutherford County Board of Commissioners rules and regulations be amended as provided herein. Whereas it is necessary and appropriate to adopt a fully updated version of the Rutherford County Board of Commissioners rules and regulations that incorporate said amendments. Now therefore be it resolved by the Rutherford County Board of Commissioners as follow. The rule 2-D of the Rutherford County Board of Commissioners rules and regulations be deleted in its entirety and replaced with the following. Chairman. If the commission elects a county commissioner as its chairman, then such commissioner may serve up to two standing committees to which he or she is elected pursuant to Rule 8, and shall also receive committee pay for serving on and attending the meetings of such standing committee. Said commissioner as chairman of the commission shall also serve on all other standing committees to which he or she is not so elected in an ex officio capacity only and shall receive committee pay for serving on and attending the meetings of such other standing committees. Said commissioner shall not serve as chairman of any standing committee. If the commission elects the county mayor as the chairman of the commission, the county mayor shall not serve on any committee except in an official capacity and shall not receive committee pay. Number two, that Rule 8-A of the Rutherford County Board of Commissioners rules and regulations be amended by the deleting the words county mayor and replacing the same with the word chairman. Number three, that a fully updated version of the Rutherford County Board of Commissioners rules and regulations which incorporates the above amendments and which is attached herein as Exhibit A and incorporated herein by reference as if set forth herein at length verbatim shall be and hereby is adopted and approved. Number four, that to the extent necessary, the Rutherford County Board of Commissioners Handbook B and the same is hereby amended and set forth herein. Resolved this 16th day of June, 2022. Mr. Chairman, I so move. I have a motion. Is there a second? I have a second. Discussion. Yes, sir, Commissioner. Just one question just popped in my mind. Um, I think prior to this, us adopting, opt, opt, adopting this, that the mayor, if the mayor is not the chairman, does the mayor have veto authority? If he was, if the mayor is not the chairman? Correct. Yes, sir, he has veto power. And that's still here? Yes, sir. And the override of veto is just a simple majority? Yes, sir, Correct. it's a simple majority. Thank you. Other questions? Seeing none, we'll be on the board. Please cast your vote, members. Anyone that did not vote and wishes to vote or anyone who would like to change your vote, you may do so now. Record the vote, Madam Clerk. 19 yes. Motion passes. Mr. Chairman, before I leave, I want to uh, take this opportunity to thank everyone here. We are running for re-election. Um, I want to wish you luck, Robert, wish you luck. And uh, I want to thank the commissioners that won't be coming back. Uh, thank you for their service. Thank you for all that you've done, which is a lot, Joe Gurley, especially. You've been just an unbelievable commissioner. Veronica, what can we say? So I wanted to take that opportunity on behalf of personal note. Rob, Stephanie, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Gurley. I, I would just like to say that those of us who will be leaving August 31st at midnight, at least for my part, I'll be working as a commissioner up until August 31st at midnight for my constituents. 
I'm continuing to get calls from them. I'm continuing to field questions from I'm, them, and I'm, I'm continuing have to do call that. you about 11:59. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> All right, members. Um, next, we have e executive session, but I do have uh, Commissioner Rather has something other other business he'd like to bring up. So, without objection, I'll take uh, other business before we go into executive session. Commissioner Rather. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, before I ask you this question, I just want to say that I've talked to commissioners in other counties about this vote we just made, this amendment or change to the handbook. One county, which is a charter county, is very, very pleased with that structure. Uh, the guy was very animate that the chairman, who's also a commissioner, not chair another committee. That was a question that popped around in steering. Uh, two other counties, I'm not gonna mention them, because I don't know who knows what in those counties, but they're watching this county, what we did tonight, because they want to do the same thing. They've been wanting to do it for years. So we are an example to other people, other counties. Um, I hate to even let this out of my mouth, but the Adult Entertainment Board uh, was discussed and with smiles on everybody's face or holding it back. Um, and I've gotten two calls, citizens concerned about what that board really is. And I didn't know it and I had to tell them that board was put in place, what, a decade or more ago? Uh, yeah. So I think some clarity may cut uh, down on some phone calls that we may get, especially me. Uh, so, okay. Can you just talk about Yes, sir. Let, let me give everybody an update on that. Um, I, I received a, a note from our clerk um, stating that uh, there had an application been turned into her office at the, at the uh, Rutherford County Clerk's office. That's where those applications go. Um, it was turned in. And, uh, an individual citizen wanting to open an adult entertainment establishment in the county. Of course, cities have their own ordinances as well, just like Smyrna and Murfreesboro, but this would be in the county. Um, and in their uh, research, the last time the board was actually established, uh, the last time the board met was in 02. Uh, and had not met since 02. And when the clerk passed that information to me, she said, we've got a little bit of time because the, the citizen who turned the application in um, uh, didn't fully complete the application. So I asked the clerk to return it, tell him to fill out the application, and then it would uh, be resubmitted. So I went back to those who were previously on the board, only one accepted, um, and he said, I'm now 85 years old, but uh, uh, he said, if the mayor wants me to do that, I'll be happy to do it. So he accepted. Uh, so I did find four other people who were willing to accept that position. It's about, what, 40, 50 pages of the requirements that would have to be met, and that's what this board would actually do, is to go through and make sure that uh, they meet the minimum qualifications of age. Um, they would have to ask all the questions of the person petitioning to locate uh, an adult entertainment venue in Rutherford County. Um, I won't get into all the things that they would have to inspect or do. You can read that at your own pleasure. Um, but we do have a board uh, that would oversee. Uh, I'm not sure that it, it would, you could deny it unless it was something through planning or codes or something like that. But um, you can't deny a person from going into business. Um, but in the event that they are allowed to go into business, then these are the rules that they have to follow. Bye. Correct, Madam Clerk, is that about it? Correct. Okay, 
So that's basically it. Uh, and so now we have a viable board of, of five who are willing to serve on that, that committee. It's an appointment by the, uh, by the mayor, uh, whoever that will be in the future. Uh, the ones that we have now can be replaced by the mayor and confirmed by the full commission. So that's where we're at. Okay, any other business under other business tonight? Okay, members, we have a short executive session. We, we do have a legal issue we need to bring up, so I'm gonna ask all visitors, uh, if you would, we'll, we'll uh, recess for, for about uh, four minutes, three or four minutes, everybody please uh, exit, um, if you would, and then uh, we'll call on our attorney and come back into session. So we'll stand in recess for four minutes. All right, we'll come back out of out of executive session. Members will back in uh, order. Commissioner Cush. Thank you, Commissioner, and thank you, well, thank you, Commission, and thank you, uh, Chair. Uh, I would like to make a motion as we come out of uh, executive session uh, to retain counsel as recommended by our county attorney. Uh, at the rates that were explained to us uh, uh, by our uh, attorney during our executive session uh, with respect to the landfill matter. So I would like to make that comment. I have a motion, motion and a second. Second. Uh, second by others. We'll be, we are expending money. Some members uh, will be on the board. We got your voter. All right, members, we'll be on the board. Please cast your vote. Yeah. Record the vote, Madam Clerk. 16, yes. Motion passes. Thank you, members. Uh, is there any other business to come before this August body? Statements and announcements. I don't have a ham breakfast. Go ahead. Oh, no. I want to invite everybody to the first annual Craig Harris Shrimp Boil that is going to be at the Purposeboro Airport, July 15th at 530. It is a meet and greet. It is annual, not just election. Thank you very much. Hope you come. Tickets are available. Okay. okay so remind us again uh, on the 27th. Okay. Yeah, our final commission meeting, you can remind us again. You'll have another opportunity to uh, plug it. Okay, shrimp bowl. Statements and announcements. Statements, statements and announcements. Seeing none, we stand adjourned. <laughs>